Windows on the World was a complex of venues on the top floors 106th and 107th of the North Tower Building 1 of the original World Trade Center complex in Lower Manhattan. It included a restaurant called Windows on the World, a smaller restaurant called Wild Blue, a bar called The Greatest Bar on Earth, and rooms for private functions. Developed by restaurateur Joe Baum and designed initially by Warren Plattner, Windows on the World occupied 50,000 square feet 4, square meters of space in the North Tower. The restaurants operated from April 19, 1976 until September 11, 2001 when they were destroyed in the September 11 attacks. Operations. <inaudible> 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 The main dining room faced north and east, allowing guests to look out onto the skyline of Manhattan. The dress code required jackets for men and was strictly enforced. A man who arrived with a reservation but without a jacket was seated at the bar. The restaurant offered jackets that were loaned to the patrons so they could eat in the main dining room. A more intimate dining room, Wild Blue, was located on the south side of the restaurant. The bar extended along the south side of One World Trade Center as well as the corner over part of the east side. Looking out from the bar through the full-length windows, one could see views of the southern tip of Manhattan, where the Hudson and East Rivers meet. In addition, one could see the Liberty State Park with Ellis Island and Staten Island with the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. The kitchens, utility and conference spaces for the restaurant were located on the 106th floor. Windows on the World closed after the 1993 bombing, in which employee Wilfredo Mercado was killed while checking in deliveries in the building's underground garage. It underwent a US$25 million renovation and reopened in 1996. In 2000, its final full year of operation, it reported revenues of US$37 million, making it the highest grossing restaurant in the United States. Executive chef of Windows on the World included Philippe Ferret of Brasserie Julian, and the last chef was Michael Lomonaco. <laughs> September 11 attacks Windows on the World was destroyed when the North Tower collapsed during the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. That morning, the restaurant was hosting regular breakfast patrons and the Risk Waters Financial Technology Congress. World Trade Center lessor Larry Silverstein was regularly holding breakfast meetings in Windows on the World with tenants as part of his recent acquisition of the Twin Towers from the Port Authority, and was scheduled to be in the restaurant on the morning of the attacks. However, his wife insisted he go to a dermatologist's appointment that morning, whereby he avoided death. Everyone present in the restaurant when American Airlines Flight 11 penetrated the North Tower perished that day, as all stairwells and elevators leading to below the impact zone were destroyed immediately. Victims trapped in windows on the world died either from smoke inhalation from the fire, jumping or falling from the building to their deaths, or the eventual collapse of the North Tower 102 minutes later. There were 72 restaurant staff present in the restaurant, including acting manager Christine Ann Ollander, whose desperate calls to Port Authority police represented the restaurant's final communications. 16 incisive media risk waters group employees, and 76 other guests, contractors were also present. After about 9.40 am, no further distress calls from the restaurant were made. The last people to leave the restaurant before Flight 11 collided with the North Tower at 8.46 am were Michael Nestor, Liz Thompson, Jeffrey Wharton, and Richard Tierney. They departed at 8.44 am and survived the attack. Topic. Critical review In its last iteration, Windows on the World received mixed reviews. Ruth Reichel, a New York Times food critic, said in December 1996 that, "...nobody will ever go to Windows on the World just to eat, but even the fussiest food person can now be content dining at one of New York's favorite tourist destinations." She gave the restaurant two out of four stars, signifying a very good quality rather than excellent three stars or 
extraordinary four stars. In his 2009 book Appetite, William Grimes wrote that, "...at Windows, New York was the main course." In 2014, Ryan Sutton of Eater.com compared the now-destroyed restaurant's cuisine to that of its replacement, One World Observatory. He stated, Windows helped usher in a new era of captive audience dining in that the restaurant was a destination in itself, rather than a lazy byproduct of the vital institution it resided in. Topic: <laughs> Cultural impact and legacy. Windows of Hope Family Relief Fund was organized soon after the attacks to provide support and services to the families of those in the food, beverage, and hospitality industries who had been killed on September 11 in the World Trade Center. Windows on the World Executive Chef Michael Lomonica and owner-operator David Emile were among the founders of that fund. It has been speculated that The Falling Man, a famous photograph of a man dressed in white falling headfirst on September 11, was an employee at Windows on the World. Although his identity has never been conclusively established, he was believed to be Jonathan Briley, an audio technician at the restaurant. On March 30, 2005, the novel Windows on the World, by Frederic Babita, was released. The novel focuses on two brothers, aged seven and nine years, who are in the restaurant with their dad Carthew Yorston. The novel starts at 8.29 a.m. just before the plane hits the tower and tells about every event on every following minute, ending at 10.30 a.m., just after the collapse. Published in 2012, Kenneth Womack's novel The Restaurant at the End of the World offers a fictive recreation of the lives of the staff and visitors at the Windows on the World Complex on the morning of September 11. On January 4, 2006, a number of former Windows on the World staff opened Colors, a cooperative restaurant in Manhattan that serves as a tribute to their colleagues and whose menu reflects the diversity of the former Windows staff. That original restaurant closed, but its founder's umbrella organization, Restaurant Opportunities Centers United, continues its mission, including at Colors restaurants in New York and other cities. Windows on the World was planned to reopen on the top floors of the new One World Trade Center, when the tower completed, however, on March 7, 2011, it was cancelled because of cost concerns and other troubles finding support for the project. But successes of Windows on the World, One Dine, One Mix and One Café, are located at One World Observatory. See also. List of tenants in One World Trade Center Top of the World Trade Center Observatories <laughs>